Now, I'd like to announce that this is the end of our holding ceremony. Now, as a second program, we will start the Ivan Forum. As the first issue is uh, ethics in Ivan. Still, people are congratulating me on this Now, at the starting of uh, uh, the, the forum, I'd like to invite the President of Ivan to give the instruction of the purpose of the holy this forum. Please welcome Ivan President once more. Dear participants, uh, now we come to the second part of this morning, this uh, forum. As the uh, executive director explained earlier, this forum covers two topics. These two topics, I think in the last two years, almost everything has been thinking about these two areas. The first part is the ethics. All sports is a very subjective uh, judgment sport. Because of this uh, nature, you fail play becomes very, very important. I must say, what happened in the past, boxing didn't get a very good reputation on the fair play. If we don't give the people confidence of our sport, it's a fair judging sport. We'll lose the support. We'll lose the boxes. We'll lose the support, particularly from many parts of the Olympic family. Because if the result of competition can be in the evening, can be influenced, and also involved in cheating, and what is better of our sport? Nobody will trust and believe our sport. So since I took over the president of AIBA in 2006, my most important task is absolutely want to make sure our integrity the fair play come back. So I think uh, come back to have the fair play, we must have this. So I set up the ethics commission since I took over the president. This commission, chaired by the former Director General of the International Olympic Committee, Mr. Francois Gabba, he took the chairman. He fully realized the importance of the ethics of the IEP. So we have a series of work, particularly this commission produced the Code of Ethics. Like any organization, even in the family, in the society, in a country, ethics is most important to maintain the justice, to maintain the direction of the development of this world. <coughs> so since the Ethics Commission set up the Code of Ethics, approved by the EC, then we have a lot of reform conducted. This reform, and also I think uh, with the uh, subsequent we set up this disciplinary commission, is all for the purpose of maintaining of the family, maintaining of code of ethics, and keep discipline in our sports. We have to have a discipline. No discipline, you cannot manage the organization, particularly our sports organization. We all volunteers. The boxers sacrifice their time, <coughs> sacrifice many, many things. Practice, sweating. What for? Do they love the sport? We, as administration, and the leaders in the sport, we have to provide a very ground, very good ground 
for all the people involved, they are for us. Everything we do is protection of us. So this is main thing. So the first part of this morning is talking about ethics. This is important. Second part, I think uh, we all know. After the Olympic Games, many critics come to Aliba. It's regarding our scoring machine. Because we can make, we can make sure it's fair play. But if our instrument, our means of judging are not compliant with everybody's expectations, then we will say, your score machine, your system, something wrong. You need to improve. Without improvement, this sport is still not perfect. I want to make sure our sport can be accepted and can be, I think, uh, uh, encouraged by many people, not only from our inside, but from our senses. Okay, amateur boxing, Olympic boxing, now it's an uh, honest sport because the whole system, including the judges, everything is fair. Then we'll get a credibility. Once we have the credibility, we can develop our support to an even higher level. The, the second part is talking about the new scoring system, what we want in the future. We have today all the participants from different parts of our family. We have, we have boxers here, coaches, trainers, referee judges, administrators, medical doctors, everybody involved in boxing, all the back, we also have the media. Have the outside, they love boxing. They want to see the better boxing and to develop. The way I get made here to this point. Let's concentrate on the second part of the data. The end of the day, I do hope we'll have a very constructive, very productive recommendation to the Aniba. Then we will base on this, we'll make sure we can develop much better scoring system. And also everybody fully understand the ethic requirement by members of the Aniba families. Many thanks for your coming. Today is the rest day, but I think your participation in this forum mark a history. Thank you very much for your support. And Now, uh, please join me uh, to invite the moderators, moderator and then also the members of uh, our forum for the, the issue of uh, ethics in Aiba. Mr. Ed Hula, as a moderator, he is editor of the Around the, of the Rings. Please uh, welcome Mr. Hula. Now, Dr. Roberto Frogoni, as one of the panel members, as a member of the IPA Ethics Commission, Mr. Andre de Gaul, now a member of IPA PR and Press Commission, Mr. Richard Baker, IPA Communication
is my great pleasure to have the opportunity to share my thoughts and ideas with you on matters of media relations and on how to communicate with members of the international press. As a sensitive individual, I have always been interested in the background stories of support, which I am covering, not only by what is happening on the surface, but more importantly, what is behind what is happening behind the scenes. This is quite an obvious wish of the media worker, whose duty is to inform the public in the most comprehensive way possible. On the other side of the equation, there are the athletes, the judges, the referees, officials of the different clubs and sports federations, whose apparent and natural wish is to paint a favorable picture of the organization they represent. In our case, or in a wider sense of the world, the world of boxing. Not necessarily hide or conceal the truth from the outside world, from the media, but quite understandably not to show the ugly side, if there is such one, of our beautiful sport. As they say, the noble arts of several peoples. Some officials believe that we, the media, are on opposing sides of the barricade, but this is not true. We not only try to reveal the scandals in sport, but more importantly, we give an exposure to the sport, and set examples through introducing the outstanding personalities in the ring, from Joe Louis to my compatriot Laszlo Pop, to tell people and to social media from China. Without the media, high level sports and high level boxing would be senseless. Without media exposure, it would, be, it would remain an obscure pastime, unable to break out from small town gyms. Therefore, it is, a, it is of utmost importance for the members of the IBA family to be able to deal with the representative of the media in a proper way to serve them, to provide them with the required quantity of information, to explain all debated questions without exposing the so-called family matters, cases that do not enhance the popularity of our sport, scandals that would tarnish the image of boxing, matters that do not concern the public. Just like it has happened countless times in the past, from the 1988 Seoul Olympic Games through the 1999 World Championships in Houston to the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games, when irresponsible members of the Aiba family gave way to their emotions, sometimes justified outrage in an unacceptable way, thus ruining the image of boxing. This is what brings me to ethics and behaving in an ethical manner. We all have one goal, and that is to work for the benefit of boxing. In order to achieve this goal, one must operate in an ethical manner, including when dealing with the press. A prime example happened during the Beijing Olympic Games, when an IBA vice president and deputy delegate chose to air his concerns to the international media in the form of an unofficial press conference. <clears throat> this action is selfish, counterproductive, and above all, unethical. Rather than choosing to discuss issues in a private and confidential manner, he chose to publicize his concerns and allegations to the international media, which not only affects the credibility of IBA, but also of the individual concern. This also concerns internal <coughs> communication. Spontaneous and ill-founded allegations internally also create the same effect, especially to the individual spreading such untrue, false suspicions. What purpose does it serve? It only serves to harm the reputation of the individual, to instigate such rumors and the reputation of AIBA and boxing as a whole. Because boxing is one of the oldest and most popular summer Olympic sports. 
Boxing's first appearance in the modern games was in 1904 in St. Louis. The sport was not included in the 1912 games in Stockholm because Sweden's national law banned it. However, boxing returned for good in 1920 and has produced some of the games' most enduring memories and heroes. Olympic boxing has had its fair share of glorious moments and memorable champions and more than its fair share of scandals and controversies. Which led to the perception that the Olympic movement, the Olympic Games, could do without our beautiful sport. Ladies and gentlemen, my friends, it is our duty to prove that this perception is wrong. False, that boxing is an integral part of modern Olympic Games. Therefore, let me suggest a couple of guidelines on media or press management, which doesn't mean the manipulation of the media. On the contrary. First, if any of you holds a press conference, either here at an international event or at home in his or her country, you are asked not to criticize the internal politics of the sport. Try not to blame the referees or judges, the leaders of AIBA or the continental confederations for the not so good performance of your boxers. First of all, by doing so, you take on the responsibility from the boxers and coaches. You acquit them and put the blame on outside circumstances instead of emphasizing the importance of hard and methodic preparation. Secondly, you paint the picture of a corrupted and improperly managed sport, which is harmful to the world of boxing. Second, for boxers, coaches, trainers, team leaders at the competitions, it is important to concentrate on expressing the values of performance instead of dealing with internal politics. Set examples to the youth, put emphasis on the outstanding accomplishments, do not talk about the analysis of judging and referee. These problems do exist, nobody wants to say they don't. But these are so-called family matters and must be solved within the AIBA family. For AIBA family members, all matters taking place in the competitions should be resolved at the venue. All complaints and suggestions for changes should be discussed internally within AIBA. It is very harmful to the sport to reflect an image of quarreling member federations. We need to emphasize that the AIBA family members should comment all issues based on sportsmanship. Boxing is the most straightforward of all sports. You fight your opponent face to face, never from behind. This should be the principle outside of the ring as well. Fabricating conspiracy theories is contrary to the spirit of sport, the spirit of boxing. In terms of fighting, animosity between member federations is extremely harmful to boxing. We must project an image of unity and understanding. We also need to emphasize that positive comments always receive the respect from the public. If you talk about an international championship, an event of continental magnitude, it is important to cite positive examples, memorable bouts, outstanding athletes instead of concentrating on cheats and controversial decisions. Talking in general is, is a weapon of the weak. If you are not satisfied with something, <coughs> this or that seems not right or correct to you, we have to come forward with concrete examples, with evidences, instead of speaking in general terms and blaming people without any proof. After all, gentlemen, what is the purpose of this lecture? To turn your kind attention to the importance of press, public relations and communications in trying to improve the image of our sport, boxing, and of our international federation, AIBA. I would like to believe that this short seminar is just the beginning of educating the AIBA family members. We also need to combine media or press guideline booklets to distribute to all AIBA family members. Hopefully, you will soon have this booklet 
which will also help you with the media and public relations management. What I ask of you is the service of world boxing, this beautiful sport which is the object of our love, our passion. Internal division is the way leading to the destruction of our sport. Unity is the only way to the development of progress, to the long-term success of boxing. Thank you. Muchas gracias.
all have to sign code of conduct. Give you those code which you cannot do, which you can do, but most things which contradict or against the interest of the competition, against the interest of the Olympic spirit, against the fair play, you cannot do it. So all of these measures, I want to keep emphasizing. Every competition, before the competition start, I always, always go to meet with the judges. Remind them, never, never do something wrong against your consciousness. Because what you are doing is affecting the boxers. You have to keep the fair judging, protect every boxer. They have trained for many years. You cannot decide if he's winning or lose. Let him decide. So this is the message I keep giving to the uh, uh, boxing. Within our EC members, within our uh, uh, people involved in boxing, I keep emphasizing. So I think uh, we hope uh, we can build up a new culture. Everybody involved in boxing, automatically, clean, honest, against <coughs> any form of corruption, any form of the manipulation. Then I think I will be good So good opening comments there. If you are a referee, a judge, a coach, an athlete, what do you think of the Aiba Code of Ethics? What do you think of how this is all handled by the Boxing Federation? We have microphones around the room for you to express your opinion in a few minutes. Uh, Dr. Fergoni, now you are with the uh, IEBA Ethics Commission. Does this commission have the power to, to bring about changes? Are you comfortable with the way this brand new commission is working with IEBA? Thank you. Yes, I think in the beginning, because we were I have no uh, disciplinary code, no disciplinary commission, it was a little confusion between the ethics commission and disciplinary commission. But I think as the chairman, as the CARA, we, we, made, we made a good job because we decided to fight again uh, many things. Because during many years, no action against an ethics situation now in two years many actions and I think many people make mistake because they make confusion between action against an ethics situation and politic decision. This is a big risk for IPA now. But it's not politic decision, it's a decision against an ethic situation. And I think when you fight against an ethic situation, you fight for the boxer and for the boxing. And we need to continue this fight because when the people say the truth, when the people fight for the boxing, it's good for Aiba and for the sport. Do people still not fully understand the rules, what's happening right now with the uh, codes in, in Aiba, the President rule? Yes, I think uh, the Code of Ethics uh, was uh, approved last year. And based on that ethics uh, uh, code, after proof, immediately circulation to the Federation and also to EC members was put on our website. So the AIPA website contains all those uh, code, code of ethics, code of discipline, and also I think uh, during the game is the code of conduct. All of these uh, are uh, open to every uh, member in the Aiba families. But if you don't have it, I must apologize because uh, our communication department work very hard. Try to reach every member in the family, let them understand. We have developed the code. Please, everybody, follow the code to uh, make sure your behavior is uh, compliant with the requirement. Um, Richard Baker, the communications director for IEBA, sometimes the phone will ring, maybe, in your office uh, about ethical questions involving IEBA. Uh, is, is the media, the press, interested in these kinds of stories? Ultimately, they're uh, very much interested in the overall process of the new IEBA administration. They're very impressed with what is 
the new Ibo administration and, and the, the new president has achieved in the last two years. But it's more so they're ultimately interested in the performance of the boxes. That's their main interest. And ultimately where the way we have conducted the everybody within the organization, coaches, athletes, the officials, it's the image that one conducts in their performance, the way that they come across, not only in tournaments but between tournaments, in their own country. That's the key ingredient with how the Ibris portraying itself at the moment. Uh, Andres Gall, can I ask you a question? You know, you follow boxing very closely among the among the journalists. Do, do journalists have a favorable impression about how how boxing, how much boxing is being run these days? Well, well, uh, there is a mixed uh, impression among uh, newsmen, media men. And, and journalists about amateur boxing because of uh, because of mostly because of the scandals of the past. But uh, <clears throat> uh, during the past two years, this image has been improving gradually. But I think we still have uh, a long way to go. Uh, we had uh, quite a few problems during during the Beijing Olympic Games. Uh, some controversial uh, acts, which I which I touched in my in my speech, but uh, I sincerely hope that uh, in the future we can sort out all these problems. What's the difference between ethics and discipline? What's an ethics problem? What's a discipline problem? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we first of, first of all set up the uh, commission. Ethics. Yeah. Because uh, when you have nothing, you must establish your law. Without the law, how could you conduct the ethics and uh, conduct eventually the discipline? So the uh, code of ethics is just like a law in the country, in any society. You must have some very clear guidelines of your organization. The people involved in this organization, they have to follow. Like IOC have the uh, ethic commission. Ethic com com commission give a very clear guideline. The IOC member, which thing you can do, which thing you cannot do. And uh, anything uh, that you are involved in sport, you must consider co the, the uh, conflict interest. Because once the conflict interest comes, you can not get involved. So all of this, starting from Kota, Ethics. When the ethics commission is set up, that is uh, look after the whole organization's aesthetic problems. And then, when we come to execute the action, who written the code? <coughs> what kind of uh, uh, sentence or you uh, would say the consequences that we're going to face? We must have a commission to base on this offense based on this uh, the allegation, then to examine the investigate and then give the final sentence. We also given the uh, possibility for appeal because uh, all this procedure is uh, very, very clear. I think the AIBA, I want to establish really the AIBA is absolutely, uh, I think, uh, systematically have uh, the full respect of the, the, the code of uh, and full expect every individual. So we set up this procedure. Uh, when mentioning about this uh, Olympic case, yes, immediately happened, a greater case, immediately to the asset commission. Asset commission, based on the case, based on the information, start to examine, to investigate, and then set up the hearing. All the parties or persons involved in the case, the commission will call them for hearing. He has the chance to defend. He has the chance to give all the description and what happened. And he has the right. So after the hearing, then the commission will base on the statement and based on the fact of the hearing, they will discuss because we have the code of the, the discipline. Based on the discipline code, then they said, all right, this is uh, true. He did offend the code. 
then we will receive the sentence. This sentence, uh, I think, will certainly tell which you are now continue as a member, continue as a member of the family or uh, your position, or you have to leave, or you have to be suspended. So we keep this commission absolutely independent. They are legal experts. So they have the full right to base on our code of discipline, which is approved by the EC. So they do the job totally independent. Nobody can interfere. I, as a president, I don't even never talk to them. Because I said, you do what you think is the, the right to protect the best interest of the integrity of the uh, IEA. So this is the situation. And the result, once they made the decision, result immediately open to public. And the media, you can wait and uh, wait for the result. But all his uh, behavior, the person involved, if he's against the code, he has to, to face uh, punishment. So this is, uh, I think, uh, what we are doing. And if people have questions, uh, comments, we have the microphones, so please just uh, go to one of the microphones and we will recognize you, uh, when, you when you go to the microphone. Uh, we're talking often about officials, referees and judges involved with ethics cases. What about athletes? What is athletes' involvement in perspective of ethics code? Uh, I want Dr. Fergoni and Dr. Wu to talk about how they feel athletes must follow these. <clears throat> For me, in this time, we have no big problem with the athletes. I think any case of doping, but no more. Problem is for the uh, all family members, not the athlete. For me, the athlete was the one of the part of the best part of this family. <laughs> but the problem was in the other part of the family. We know, I, my opinion is very clear. Ethic, an ethic action is when you, you give a bad image of your family, my family. A disciplinary action is when you are against the rule. For me, it's a big difference. And uh, if all members involved in the IBA family respect the situation, respect the rule, respect the ethics situation, and think for the boxing and for the boxer, and forget his own interest, we have no problem, only for the rule. But for the athlete, I repeat, for me, no problem. Boxing is a very strong sport. And the athlete has no time to think about that situation. Now, Dr. Dr. Wu, yeah, I think we have a question from the floor here. Well, Dr. Wu, what are your expectations for, for athletes under the IAO code? Okay. <coughs> I think uh, the boxers in our sport, I keep emphasizing because uh, you sacrifice a lot to take part in this sport. So you should receive very high respect. And, uh, but I think uh, very, very few cases, I think uh, Dr. Mugoni mentioned about the main offense is uh, the uh, uh, anti-doping. The doping, I think, is uh, universal, I think, uh, uh, value now, because uh, using doping to get a better result is against the family. So no way, I think, uh, in the sports, except anybody using the doping. The doping to achieve better results. This is achieving, so I think no problem. But I have to tell you, boxing is one of the sports very, very low uh, rate of the uh, cases uh, which uh, breaking the anti-doping code. This is very good because we are very, very few. But I think uh, we did have few cases happen. I want to take this opportunity also to tell our athletes bosses. Because uh, what happened during the World Championship in Chicago? Three boxes from one team were caught by police and bring the case to us because it was shoplifting in the shops. 
that this kind of behavior become very serious. And uh, based on the fact, we immediately send them home, disqualify them, also they receive the suspension for the right to compete in any percentage event. And also, I think a uh, recent case happened in Africa, one of the country. The coach and the athletes, the boxers, involved in the drug trafficking, caught by the custom of the country. And now they still in jail. We were told they are facing a very long term sentence, more than 40 years. There's nothing we can do because this is totally, I would say, it's a disgraceful for the sport. So these few cases involving the individual, because come to that moment, they forgot they are involved, they are sportsmen. They have to be honest. How could they involve in this kind of criminal act? Fortunately, none